after three years, one long investigation into the scandal entangling Labor MP Craig Thompson and the Health Services Union is finally over. But another one is just beginning. Fair Work Australia has handed over its report to the Commonwealth Prosecutor, bypassing two state police investigations. It contains claims of scores of illegalities, many of them potentially criminal. In a moment, I'll speak to the union's National Secretary, Cathy Jackson, Jackson who's at the centre of the long-running saga. But first, this report from Hayden Cooper. Three years, 1,100 pages, and now it's over to the prosecutors. Craig Thompson's woes are far from over. This is where it all began seven long years ago. Tiffany's brothel in Sydney's Surrey Hills. Just one of the establishments where Craig Thompson allegedly used his union credit card for personal purposes. At the time, he was the head of the Health Services Union. A few years later, his successors blew the whistle. The HSU first became aware of the questionable financial transactions in May 2008. The transactions were frequent and wide-ranging. Over a five-year period, the union boss is accused of taking cash advances from the credit card, totalling $100,000. In Parliament, the now MP's former life became fodder for his enemies. Can the Prime Minister confirm the that she still has full confidence in the member for Dobell? The answer to the member's question is yes. He always denied the claims, even when credit card statements revealed several payments to prostitutes, phone records revealed several calls to brothels, and one establishment offered up a damning photocopy of a driver's licence. That's quite unbelievable. It's incredulous to think that uh, someone, as I said, broke into Craig's house, stole his wallet, stole his credit card, stole his phone, knew how to get onto his phone, drove down to Sydney. Um, the thief, whoever it was, looked a lot like Craig, uh, must have had the calligrapher's art because he had a signature a lot like Craig, had a transaction which we won't go into, then drove back up the central coast, broke back into the house, put everything back where he found it and life went on. Now that's one story. The other story is he did it. Fair Work Australia's report identifies 181 alleged contraventions of the Workplace Relations Act. 105 could lead to civil penalties. The rest could result in criminal prosecution. And it's not just directed at Craig Thompson. His ally and health union president, Michael Williamson, has also been accused of misusing union funds. Then there's the whistleblower, Cathy Jackson, whose own past in the union has been under scrutiny. You're married to Jeff Jackson! Not married to Jeff Jackson! She's also likely to attract attention over her role in charge of the Victorian branch. This report must be made public. The Prime Minister herself should demand that the report be made public. And so this sorry saga lurches from one lengthy chapter to the next. Fair Work Australia will now consider taking action in the federal court. The Commonwealth DPP will launch a new investigation. New South Wales Police will push on with theirs, as will the Victorian authorities. And through all of this, Craig Thompson maintains his innocence. Hayden Cooper with that report. And a short time ago, I spoke with the Health Services Union National Secretary. Cathy Jackson, welcome. Thank you, Chris. Do you have any idea at all about what's in the 1,100 pages of the Fair Work to report that's been handed to the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecutions? Before I answer your question, I just want to make it quite clear that I'm not here as the National Secretary of the Health Services Union, as I've been gagged by my national executive. I'm here as a private citizen and a member of the Health Services Union. Um, I've not, and to answer your question now, um, I've not seen the report. The report has not been provided to me. I note that in Miss O'Neill's media release, she states that on the 28th that we received such a report. I have not received such a report. If anyone else in the union has received it, well, they've not provided it to me. Well, Fair Work says that there are 181 breaches, apparently, 105 are civil, so assuming that up to 76 might be potential criminal breaches, could any of those refer to you? 
Definitely not. Those breaches relate to Mr Thompson and I think that Ms O'Neill should have made that quite clear in her report that she put out today. Those allegations that they've made against me are uh, administrative allegations and I, I want to address those tonight. Those allegations are that I missed four meetings of the National Executive while I had primary, as a working mother with primary school aged children, I did miss four meetings of the National Executive over a period of time. And um, the other issue was the 0607 financial returns, which I could not sign. Yes. I was not prepared to sign a report that Mr Thompson had commissioned and that I knew was incorrect. And I followed the advice of Fair Work Australia in providing that information to them. So what do you make of this investigation? There's already an ombudsman inquiry into it. Should there be more? I think there definitely should be more. I believe there should be a judicial inquiry into the goings on at Fair Work Australia. I believe that either it's, you know, when I say I believe, I also include in that the public have already made up their minds. The members of the Health Services Union have made up their minds and I believe the media has made up their minds. You say the public's made up its mind, your members have made up their minds. What do they think then of Fair Work Australia? What do you think they've made up their minds about? I think it's taken an extraordinary amount of time to come up with what they've come up with today, which is referred to the DPP. The report that the National Executive of the Health Services Union provided to Fair Work Australia was a comprehensive report. It should have taken them three, maybe six months to come form a view and at that point refer it to the DPP. I don't think, I don't think it, it, is, it is at all acceptable to be referring something to the DPP four years later, but also not to name people in that media release. So you think that this independent statutory authority has been deliberately trying to protect the Labor government? There's an appearance of that. Do you believe that to be the case? Well, Chris, you, you're a very good um, questioner um, and your questions are great, but I'm not prepared to go to say other than what I've previ previously said, that the members are saying that this is the case, the members of the public are saying that's the case, and so is the media. Now, at this stage, Craig Thompson has not been charged with any offence. He's not been charged with any civil offence. So is this perhaps just a vendetta that's being pursued by you? Why would, I, why would I have a vendetta? That's what I ask. There are people out there smearing me and peddling those um, smears against me. My primary interest, as I've said from the beginning of this sorry saga, is that we need to have accountability and transparency in our organisation. I stood up with the rest of the National Executive finally and said enough was enough and, and, we, and I referred this matter to the police. That's where it, sh that's where it ended up and I'm sorry it didn't end up there earlier. And as we, as we sit here tonight, we're still in the position where Fair Work Australia is still not releasing any information to the Victoria Police or the New South Wales Police, but instead they're going through the DPP to do that. But during the course of all of this, which now stretches for a number of years, you've made lots of allegations. In fact, the last time you were on this program, you accused ministers of interfering with this process, and yet you had no evidence for that, did you? Well, let's have a judicial inquiry where they've got widespread powers to compel people to come and speak to them. And do you believe that government ministers should be called before that judicial inquiry? Yes, I do. Which government ministers? Uh, well, that's a matter for the, judicial, uh, the terms of reference of the judicial inquiry. I don't think it's a matter for me. Um, and I'm not prepared to speculate on the 7.30 report. If Mr Thompson was charged by the DPP, do you think that he should stand aside from his seat in Parliament? I think it's a matter for the Labor Party and the Prime Minister and Mr Thompson. This is not a matter for me. Do you think though that the Prime Minister should ask him to step down? I think there was a time when the Prime Minister um, should have asked him to stand down and I think it's too late for that now. Are you surprised that the Prime Minister constantly says that she has confidence in Mr Thompson? Uh, yes, I'm totally surprised by that. Now, you're a member of the Labor Party. Are you at all disturbed by the fact that your actions might, at some point in the future, bring down a Labor government? Well, they're not my actions. I want to make that quite clear. This is not of my making. Um, this is not at all of my making or the Health Services Union's making. This is, once again, and I, I, I'm sorry that I've got to say this, once again, it, sh sh it shows how dysfunctional the ALP has become. It, is, it shows how unions are being abused and used by the Labor Party when it suits them. And I think it's about time that the union movement had their own position um, 
and this is a great example. This is a this is a case study of what can go wrong when the factions and um, uh, others get involved in the health services union. Cathy Jackson, thank you. Thank you.